Hello and welcome to this new tutorial video of the technical training series from ST Microelectronics. The general topic for this tutorial is going to be the programming of the STM32 option bytes. I'm going to show you how to use the STLink utility for this purpose. STLink utility is a free ST Microelectronics software available on our website. I will begin with a quick presentation of the STM32 option bytes. The STM32 family option bytes are part of the flash memory and are by default read accessible and write protected. It is therefore necessary to remove this protection before any attempt to modify them. A stealing utility is automatically taking care of that to ease things for the end user. They are actually used to control some general features of the microcontroller and therefore need to be configured accordingly by the user to fit his application. Today I will be using an STM32 connectivity line evaluation board for this tutorial. Here is a quick overview of the onboard STM32F107VCT6 option bytes. The first option byte, called User, has four relevant bits used to control the independent watchdog starting event, as well as the microcontroller behavior when entering stop and standby LAPOR modes. The last one, the readout protection bit, is very important as it is used to write and reprotect the whole flash memory of the microcontroller. The next two option bytes are actually user data storage bytes that can for example be used to store a release version number for the application. The last category of option bytes is used to control the user memory protection of the microcontroller more accurately, that is by protecting pages rather than the whole memory. The number of pages controlled by each bit of these option bytes, as well as the size, depends on the microcontroller itself. I will now show you how to actually download the ST-Link utility software. So you can just type in www.st.com slash stm32. Then so on this page, you can just go to the resources tab and then click user manuals. Here, make a research for utility. And there you go, here is the software. So if you click here, you can download the user manual for the ST-Link utility. And here on the resources link is the actual installer of the software. So you can go ahead and download it and then install it. Once it is installed, you can just start the ST-Link utility. You will go to this window. And the first thing to do is uh, connect to the micro. So I have my STM32 connectivity line eval board hooked up to my PC through an ST-Link debugger. So we can go ahead and click on target and connect to the micro. So the software is reading the flash memory content. So here it is. This is actually what is written in the flash memory of the micro. So you can see here the device information that has been gathered by the software. So you can see that it is completely accurate. Okay, now, now to modify the option bytes, go to target and then you have the option byte link here. So just click on it and we get to this window. So here we can see that we have a description of the option bytes I was mentioning earlier. So this one, the readout protection for the moment, uh, the memory protection of the memory is disabled. So you can then enable it. The whole memory will be protected. The only thing to remember is when, if you disable again the protection once it is enabled, the whole flash memory will be actually erased. So here, the option by controlling the uh, independent watchdog and the behavior of the micro when entering stop modes. You have these gray option bytes here. It's because they are belonging to another micro of the STM32 family. They are not actually present in the STM32 F107. So here the data storage user bytes. So here we can modify this one. And here are the bits, the bytes actually that protects uh, the pages in the memory rather than the whole memory. So you can see here that page zero and page one, each holding 2K bytes, are right protected at the moment. So we can just unselect them like that. And now if we apply, the software is actually uploading the option bytes and then reading them so that you can verify they have been well programmed. So if we go back to our option bytes, here it is. So the changes have been registered correctly into the memory. 
So thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it.